Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start Oh yeah, it's a Saturday show It's a Saturday show it's a Saturday show. 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 What's going on, bud? Oh, hey, Toby. Um, I'm just writing some jokes. Jokes, huh? What do you got? Well, I could tell you some of them, but um, I don't want to spoil it. Spoil what, man? Aren't jokes meant to be shared? Yeah, you see, tonight is my first comedy show. Oh, very cool. So you are going to share them. Yeah, I'm very excited and a little nervous. Oh, Otto, don't be nervous. It's very brave of you to tell jokes to a crowd. Speaking of, can I tell you a joke? Sure, hit me. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Uh, I don't know if I'll use that one, um, but I've got to keep writing. Okay, well, I'll let you get prepared, and I'll host the rest of the episode so that you can keep working. Okay, thanks, Toby, um, and I'll see you later for the show. See you later, bud. All right, folks, as you might have guessed, today's episode is all about jokes and riddles. And I'm left to host while Otto prepares for his comedy show tonight. So first up, we're going to go to Kashi and Christopher for the word of the day. But if you're sad about Summer Game 2020 ending, you can get a jump start on Summer Game 2021 by answering the riddles in the word of the day segment in all the episodes of Saturday Show from here on out. So without further ado, Kashi and Christopher. Well, we're just sitting down to play a game of Sushi Go, and I thought in the meantime, we would see what Lexi has for us. I love this game. Sushi Go is a card game. (laughs) It is a good one. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Well, let's see what it is. (laughs) It says knock, knock. Um, do you know knock-knock jokes, Kashi? Um, I know a few, yeah. So let's see, okay. So she says knock-knock. I say, who's there? (laughs) Um. A little old lady. (laughs) Huh. So now I say, a little old lady who? A little old lady. Ooh. Oh, I get it. A little old lady. Ooh. That's great, Lexi That's and Kashi. Yeah. <laughs> well, are you ready for the summer game code? Yes. Okay, here it is. It's a good one. Okay. It's nine letters. Okay. And it's a kind of puzzle or toy that looks like a maze. It's also where the Minotaur lived in Greek mythology. Oh, a Minotaur, that's a person who's part animal or something? Yeah, part bull. Part bull, okay. And finally, this is the name of a great David Bowie movie from 1986. Oh my goodness, wait a second. (laughs) I think I might know. 
So if you do, you can go to play.aadl.org for big points. All right, free. All right, let's get back to our game. Hi, gang. Are you ready for a riddle that involves animals and beautiful pictures? I am. I found this book at the library, and I wanted to share it with you. It is called Beastly Puzzles, A Brain-Boggling Animal Guessing Game. And it says, open the flap to solve the puzzle. Let's try one. Before we start, though, here's the big question. If I give you a puzzle of animal parts, can you guess what creature they would make? Hmm. All right, here's your riddle. I want you to think about it, okay? Here's our picture. What animal could you make with these? Mirrored sunglasses, two surveillance cameras, spiked body armor, camouflage, or neon, it depends. Poison to kill 30 humans. Hmm. Do we need a hint? Okay. Here's a hint. This animal's stomach can swell to over 100 times its original size, yet it can't digest a single bit of food. What do you think it is? Now this is where I turn the flap and we find out. Ready? It's a pufferfish! It's a pufferfish. The mirrored sunglasses are its eyes. Two surveillance cameras. Crusher jaws, camouflage, and neon. A pufferfish. And this whole book is full of more riddles where you can guess what animals they are. Here's another one with pictures. Ooh, this one turned out to be a python. So it's a really pretty book. Beastly puzzles. Did any of you at home guess that? Very nice. Come on over here and talk to old Gus. Put that newfangled thing down. You and your crazy TikToker. Now let me show you how we used to have fun in the old days with string. String, it's right. It was string. Okay. Now, you got some string here. You put it around your wrists. You loop it around. And this is what you got. That's fun already. Super fun. You take your middle finger here. You go through the string there. Mm, through the string there. I'm all sweaty. And there you got a cat's cradle. Little kitty can sleep right in there. Meow. Now, young, young person, you're going to pinch those strings. Come on now. Go out under and up and open your fingers look at that got an x now i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna pinch my fingers go out and up and <laughs> fiddle sticks well possum feathers we're gonna try this again So, we're going to start off by having um, the string just around our wrist. And then we're going to take the outside string and wrap it around our hand. We're going to do this on both sides. Now, once we have now once we have this, we're going to take our middle finger and go up in So we have this now, as you can see, and so now that your partner is going to take his hands or her hands and pinch it, pull it around, and the other person will slowly let go, and that will form a X. Here and here. And go up, across, down, in, and up. 
so now you're going to have this um, square. Now the other person is going to take their two pinkies and go out, under, and in. And now we are in the cat's cradle position once again. Hi gang, are you ready for another riddle? This riddle is a folk tale and it really makes you think. So as I read you the short little folk tale, I want you to think about what the answer could be. Stories to solve. This one's called The Line. Verbal was a counselor and fool to the great Mughal Emperor Akbar. The villagers loved to talk of Verbal's wisdom and cleverness, and the emperor loved to outsmart him. One day, Akbar the emperor drew a line across the floor. Verbal, he ordered, you must make this line shorter, but you cannot erase any bit of it. Everyone present thought the emperor had finally found a way to outsmart Verbal. It was clearly an impossible task. Yet, within moments, the emperor and everyone present had to agree that Burbel had made the line shorter without erasing any part of it. How could this be? Think about it. How do you think he made that line shorter without erasing it? Would you like to know how it was done? Burble simply drew a longer line next to the first one, which made the first line shorter than the second. That was a fun one. I hope you got it. Hey, buddy, buddy, buddy. Uh, I have a joke to tell you. Hey there, Rocco. Okay. I love a good joke. Okay, okay. Uh, what do you call a moose? Playing a piano. Hmm. Let me think. A moose and a piano. Nope. I don't know. You call it a moose position. Hmm. I don't get it. Well. It's like, you know, a moose, uh -huh. but he's playing the piano, so he's a musician, so uh -huh. when you put them together, it's a moose uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you get it, right? Mm, nope. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let me try another one. Okay, I'm ready to laugh. This one's good. What has antlers and sucks your blood? Mm, don't know. A moose, but that's also a vampire. Uh, no. That's a good guess, buddy, but it's actually a mosquito. You like that one, buddy? It's like if you had a mosquito and that antler's like a moose, so you put them together and you call it a moose-skeeto. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you get it this time? Mm, nope. Ugh, buddy. Okay, okay. I've, I've only got one more of these. I didn't think I'd need so many. But I'm gonna make you laugh, buddy. Here we go. Are you ready for my best moose joke yet? Mm, yep. Okay. I really need you to focus this time, buddy. Really listen to the joke. I know it's gonna be so funny, Rocco. Oh, I just know what I'm ready. Tell me that joke. Okay. So, uh, what do you call a moose with no name? Well, I don't know. What do you call it? You call it a non-a-moose. <laughs> you know, like if you had a moose, but he didn't have a name, so he was a non-a-moose. Huh, huh. That's funny. Oh, phew! 
Buddy, I'm so glad you get it. I was out of jokes. So, you get why it's funny, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. It's funny because Anonymous is a ridiculous name. <sighs> yeah, buddy. If that's what makes you laugh, I guess that's the joke. Huh. 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 Hi, my name's Lucy, and I am back to read more of Mercy Watson to you. Okay, when we left off, in Mercy Watson to the rescue. We had finished chapter three and Mercy was headed downstairs after that loud noise to see if she could find some toast in the kitchen. So we will start with chapter four. Chapter four, in the kitchen, Mercy sniffed the table. She sniffed the kitchen counters. She sniffed the floor, but there was no toast. There was not even a crumb of toast. Mercy's stomach growled in disappointment. Boom, crack, help us, Mrs. Watson called. Mercy thought very hard. Where could she get a snack? And the answer came to her. Baby Lincoln always had sugar cookies. Baby Lincoln lived next door, and Baby Lincoln liked to share. Mercy took the kitchen doorknob in her mouth. She turned it. Help, Mrs. Watson called again. Sugar cookies, thought Mercy. She stepped outside. Chapter 5 the Lincoln sisters live next door to the Watsons. Eugenia Lincoln is the older sister. She has many opinions. One of Eugenia's opinions is that pigs should not live in houses. Eugenia often says, listen closely to me, baby. Pigs are farm animals. They belong on farms. They do not belong in houses. Yes, sister, says baby. Baby Lincoln is the younger sister. She is the baby of the family. Baby agrees with everything Eugenia says. It's easier that way. But secretly, baby has an opinion of her own. Baby's opinion is that Mercy is good company. At the Lincoln sister's house, Mercy looked into baby's window. She could see Baby sleeping. Mercy pressed her snout up against the window pane. Oink, said Mercy, but Baby did not hear her. Snuffle, said Mercy, but Baby did not wake up. Mercy tapped her hoof against the window. Baby sat up in bed. Who's there, she said. Baby saw Mercy's snout pressed up against the window. A monster, shouted Baby, a monster at my window. Mercy shook her head. Sister, shouted Baby, help, help, a monster. Eugenia woke up. She did not put in her teeth. She did not put on her glasses. Eugenia went straight to the phone and called the fire department. There is a crisis of an uncertain nature at 52 Dekawu Drive, said Eugenia Lincoln. Come immediately. And then Eugenia put on her robe and rushed into Baby's room. In her own opinion, Eugenia Lincoln was very good in a crisis. Chapter 6 What's going on in here? asked Eugenia. There's a monster outside, said Baby. She pointed at the window. That's not a monster, said Eugenia. That is the pig from next door. Mercy, said Baby. Eugenia shook her fist. 
In my opinion, said Eugenia, pigs belong on farms. Yes, sister, said Baby. Eugenia tapped a knuckle against the window. Get out of my yard, she shouted at Mercy. Oh, sister, said Baby, don't yell at her. You'll hurt her feelings. She doesn't have feelings, shouted Eugenia. She's a pig. Oh, said Baby, I'm sure you're wrong, dear. I am not wrong, Eugenia shouted. I'm never wrong. I know a pig when I see one. Eugenia scowled. She pressed her nose against the window pane. Mercy stared at Eugenia. Eugenia stared at Mercy. Pig, shouted Eugenia. She turned and ran out of Baby's room. Oh dear, said Baby Lincoln. Oh my. And that is the end of chapter six. And I think maybe Eugenia and Mercy are gonna get up to some excitement. So we will see when we return with chapter seven. Hi everyone, I'm Mariah. And if you've been watching The Saturday Show, you've probably seen me a couple times so far. Um, I have been sharing some stories about different women um, from this great book called Rad American Women A through Z. And today, since we're talking about jokes, I have a special woman to share with you. Her name is Carol Burnett. C is for Carol. Carol Burnett, who showed us that funny women can make it big. There wasn't much to laugh about during Carol Burnett's childhood, but she managed anyhow, thanks to her great imagination and quirky sense of humor. Carol was born in Texas in 1933, and her parents were both alcoholics who got into lots of fights. When she was eight, she went to live with her grandmother, Nanny, in a one-room apartment in a rundown part of Hollywood, California. When Nanny was able to scrape together enough money, she'd treat Carol to a trip to the movies. And that's when Carol fell in love with the silver screen. She wanted to go to college to study playwriting, but they didn't have the $42 to pay for the school. Then one day, an envelope containing a $50 bill magically appeared in her grandmother's mailbox, and off to college, Carol went. She never found out who left the money, but she was always grateful. At college, Carol decided to take an acting class. She got up on stage and she realized something special. She was funny. Her classmates laughed and laughed and it made her feel good. All of a sudden, after so much coldness and emptiness in my life, I knew the sensation of all that warmth wrapping around me, she once explained. Carol has always been a shy, quiet girl, but in that moment, everything changed. Carol moved to New York and found work in musicals and cabaret shows, and eventually on television. Even though everyone loved her, Carol's TV bosses were shocked when she asked for her very own variety show. Back then, variety shows were the most popular shows on TV, and only men hosted them. But Carol insisted, and The Carol Burnett Show was born. It was a smash success, and at the end of every show, she would smile at the camera and tug on her left ear. This was a secret signal to her beloved nanny who was back watching at home to let her know that everything was okay. The Carol Burnett Show was on TV for 11 years and won more than 25 awards, making Carol famous and a role model for women in comedy and television. Since we've been talking about riddles and brain teasers, this is the perfect time to introduce one of my favorite mythological creatures, the Sphinx. The Sphinx is a mythical creature with the head of a human, falcon, cat, or sheep, and the body of a lion with the wings of an eagle. The Sphinx comes from both Greek and Egyptian mythology, which later spread throughout Europe and Southeast Asia. The Sphinx is a guardian and often guards the entrances to temples and tombs. When travelers would try to pass by whatever the Sphinx was guarding, the Sphinx would pose a riddle. If the traveler guessed the answer to the riddle correctly, they were allowed to pass. If not, 
they were devoured by the ferocious and merciless Sphinx. The most famous example of the Sphinx's riddle comes from the Greek myth Oedipus. In the tale, the Sphinx was said to be guarding the entrance to the city of Thebes. The Sphinx asked Oedipus a riddle. What walks on four feet in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three at night? According to legend, Oedipus was the first person to correctly answer the riddle, and the Sphinx allowed Oedipus to pass. Oedipus became the king of Thebes, which saved the lives of the Theban citizens as well. The Sphinx devoured itself in defeat. Sphinxes are largely associated with Egypt due to the Great Sphinx of Giza, a gigantic limestone statue of a reclining Sphinx. We believe it was created sometime in between 2600 and 2500 BCE, making it the oldest known monumental statue in all of Egypt and one of the largest and oldest statues in the entire world. However, questions still remain as to when it was built, by whom, and for what purpose. We don't know when, but at one point the Sphinx was abandoned and buried in sand up to its shoulders, where it quickly deteriorated. But, beginning in ancient times, many different people have attempted to restore the Sphinx. The Great Sphinx of Giza still stands to this day, and more than 14 million people visit it each year. Maybe one day you too will see this amazing sight. I'll leave you with this, the Sphinx's lesser known second riddle. There are two sisters. One gives birth to the other one, and she, in turn, gives birth to the first. If you think you know the answer to either of the Sphinx's riddles, write to us at tss at aadl.org with your answer. We hope to hear from you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Laugh Trough. Now, strap on your feed bags and prepare to feast on some comedy. Making his stand-up debut on the stage tonight, please give a warm welcome to... Otto! Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming out. My name is Otto, and I am so glad to be here. I just flew in from Chicago, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Had to get that one out of the way, you know. Start with a bad joke. Only way to go is up, right? Well, as you can tell, I'm a turtle. Yeah. We turtles have got a reputation for, well, being a lot of things. Good looking, super funny, excellent swimmers, and one other thing. Hmm. What was it? Oh yeah, slow. <laughs> yeah, turtles have a reputation for being slow, but I'll have you know, I was only 15 minutes late getting here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That's a record for my family. My family, boy, we are never on time. In fact, my cousin Archibald was three days late to his own birthday party. <laughs> that would have been a big issue, but the rest of the family was four days late. <laughs> I love my family, though. I do. I miss them. I came up here to Michigan to accept a job offer. Love my job, love Michigan so far. One thing I do notice, though, is you Michiganders have a funny way of saying stuff, like you say you guys instead of y'all. Yeah, not that big a difference, but I noticed it. And check this out. I've met a lot of people here, and the first time I met one of my good friends, DJ Mars, we were hanging out, listening to some music, and we decided to take a break, and Mars said he was going to get a couple of pops. And the first thing I thought was, whose dad is he going to get? <laughs> you should have seen my face when he brought back two sodas. Good stuff, though, that Fago. Yeah. I only really drink it as a treat, though. Gotta keep myself healthy. 
I went to my doctor the other day. I said, Doc, I'm having a tough time here. Doc says, oh yeah? What's the problem? I told him, well, I was playing tennis, having a great old time, and afterwards I felt like I was in pretty bad shape. Doc says, well, what do you mean? I told him that every time I do this, it hurts. Doc looked at me and said, well, stop doing that. <laughs> doctors are great, though. My friend Mike the Moth was telling me about a recent visit to a doctor. Yeah. Mike went into the doctor's office, and the doc says, what can I do for you? And Mike the Moth said, well, I haven't been feeling very good. It's my foot, doctor. I was flying around from place to place in the evening, like all moths do, and I landed particularly hard on a garage door. Didn't really see it coming and just smack right into the door. My foot has been in terrible pain since then. I'm having a hard time, can't sleep right or walk right or anything. And then the doctor said, well, I'm a dentist. I work on people's teeth. What you need is a foot doctor, a podiatrist. There's really nothing I can do for you. Mike looked at the doctor and said, thanks doctor, that's what I thought. And the doctor said, well, if you needed a foot doctor, why'd you come to the dentist? And Mike the Moth said, well, the light was on. <laughs> Yeah, doctors are good people, but what I'm really interested in is history. Yeah, did you know that the original idea for Mount Rushmore was to include a fifth person on the monument? Turns out they forgot to plan ahead. <laughs> oh, and I learned this great history fact the other day. Where did they sign the Declaration of Independence? At the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I love the natural beauty of this country. From the mountains to the oceans, a great place to observe nature. There's a lot to marvel at. For instance, did you know that right smack dab in the middle of the country, there's something with five eyes that's over 2,000 miles long? You might know it as the Mississippi River. <laughs> so my Uncle Testudo is an interesting guy. Always got a story to tell. I was talking to him on video chat the other day and he didn't look right to me. His head wasn't a normal turtle head. It was still his head, but it was six times its normal size and orange. <laughs> So me, being a concerned nephew, I asked him about it. I said, Uncle Testudo, what's the deal with your big orange head? So he told me. He said, well, Otto, I was out in the marsh and I had dozed off for a while near the edge of the pond. I must have been asleep for a while because when I woke up, it was almost dark. And sitting next to me was an old lamp that I hadn't seen before. I went over to it, lifted it up, and started to wipe it off, when suddenly, poof, a genie appeared. The genie was so grateful that I found him, he offered to give me three wishes. So I did what anyone would do. I took the wishes. First, I wished for a million dollars, and bam, my wish was granted. I was so excited. Then I wished for an unlimited supply of my favorite foods. And when I went home, my pantry and fridge were full to the brim with fish and strawberries. All my favorites. And my third wish, yeah, that's where everything got messed up pretty bad. So I asked my uncle what he meant. What was his third wish? And Uncle Testudo said, well... My third wish, I wished for a big orange head. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I'm Otto. Have a great night.
folks. Welcome to a new segment on the Saturday show. This is our mailbag feature. So anything that people have written in to the Saturday show email, tss at aadl.org, will feature. And we got a couple of good ones this week. Can't wait to see this. That's right, Otto, yeah. So the first one is Betsy Beckerman, everyone's favorite storytime musician, has sent in a couple pictures of the sidewalk paint that Heidi demonstrated in episode one of the Saturday show. Betsy made it at her house. Here, take a look at these pictures. Oh, that's so pretty. Good job, Betsy. Yeah, she did a great job, Otto. And actually, up next, um, a viewer named Ann wrote in and had a couple of questions for you. She actually had a lot of questions, but I'm going to break it down. I'll give you a couple. You ready? All right, I'll try my best. The first question we got is an easy one. I hope so. What is your favorite color? Well, a lot of people think that because I'm a turtle, my favorite color is green. But as evidenced by my turtleneck, my favorite color is actually yellow. Good answer. Well thought out. And the other question for you is, what are your favorite things that you've done since you've moved to Michigan? Oh, boy. Well, uh, we've done a lot, haven't we, Toby? Yeah, we have. Um, my favorite things that I've done so far are, um, well, making you that salad was a good one. I had a lot of fun with that. And I think going to Belle Isle was a lot of fun, too. Those are my two favorites. Now, the other things I can't wait to do uh, in Michigan are... Number one, I want to go camping. And number two, I can't wait to eat a Coney dog. I had a lot of fun doing that too, Otto. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. That's it for today. Remember, if you'd like to write into the show, you can email tss at aadl.org. And if you want more great resources, you can go to aadl.org slash the Saturday show. Until next time.